Hello there guys, it's Joey. So this is basically the sort of final birthday haul. <laughs> uh, the reason for this is because my partner takes me to get some crystals every year for my birthday and I didn't go last week because I wasn't well. Um, so we went this week that's just gone. <laughs> didn't go the weekend before. You know what I mean. And I got a few bits and pieces. I also got a few bits and pieces from the holisticshop.co.uk which I highly recommend um, which we will include uh, in this sort of crystal birthday haul because there are some crystals. So from the holistic shop I got their cathedral incense. I thought I'd give it a shot, give it a try, uh, see, see what it's like. It comes with a few charcoal discs and that. I haven't opened it yet, I haven't tried it yet because I've not been well like I keep saying but it has sort of uprooted my life a little bit having tonsillitis for a week and a half. Um, I just fancied it. You know when sometimes you just fancy some certain types of incense? I was just like, I fancy that. And I also got their Three Kings smudge stick, which is blue or grandmother sage, frankincense and myrrh. And it's a, it's a great big stick. Um, again, I haven't opened it yet uh, because smoke plus sickness equals not good, um, especially when you, it's all in your throat. So I haven't tried either of these out yet, but I'm excited to, because uh, why not? And then things I have tried out from them before, um, and they have some really nice prices on these, is some of the black tourmaline. So they do rough chunks of black tourmaline and these are what are classified on their website as the small and I can't remember how much it is. It's not very much though and when you order online you obviously risk what you get uh, depending on where you are ordering from, if you're ordering on one of a kind and so on and so forth. Now the thing is about the holistic shoppers. I tried their tourmaline before and was impressed because the prices are reasonable for raw chunks of tourmaline and the size is pretty good. I mean look at this one. I mean these are classified as small and I'm telling you like any other place you'll pay two three times as much and so this one really fascinated me with its its sort of black lip design. <laughs> this one caught my eye as it came in through the post. So I'm happy for them to have a little bit of a, a different size and shape and because I have bought from before, here's some I've bought from before you see, um, and I basically wanted a few more for crystal gridding. Now I have such a lovely little grid to use so there was that. Black tourmaline, if you don't know, I've just realised I've got a crystal in here which I'm going to have to turn the camera off and go get the book. Uh, black tourmaline is very grounding. It's it's probably the grounding crystal, particularly if you're not a fan of hematite. Uh, tourmaline has this deep, earthy, very stable, very balancing type energy. It really just grounds out anything that's icky. It's not as strong as obsidian, it doesn't have quite the same uh, height elevation of energy as obsidian. So if you find obsidian overwhelming, tourmaline is a good alternative. It's really good to work with tourmaline in balance with another crystal, uh, particularly a white crystal. And seeing as I have some, I bought some more from the crystal sh shop in the local village in which I go and, and, and buy bits and pieces from I will show you. Uh, I got a couple more bits of the raw white selenite. So selenite is your positivity, you're bringing in your peace, you can hold it up to your third eye chakra, it just cleanses it out. It has a nice sort of peaceful energy, it's obviously a moon based crystal and the really good thing about raw white selenite and raw black tourmaline is they work in conjunction with one another really beautifully. So, just you could work with a piece like this and a piece like this and you could literally just have these two pieces in front of you and you are basically using the tourmaline to push away anything you don't want. So if you've been feeling sick, 
<laughs> uh, if you've been feeling emotionally dragged down, if you've been feeling uh, sort of negative within your own emotional headspace, all that sort of thing that you want to push away and cleanse yourself of and get rid of and ground it off, you use the tourmaline. But then that would leave a void, so you don't want all the negative energy coming straight back, you want to fill it with a sort of more positive energy, a more creative energy, a healthier vibration, and then you use selenite to bring that in. So there you go. So I got some selenite while I was over there as well. Before I move on to the rest of the crystals, I'm just going to mention that they do bath bombs. I've used one already. Uh, so I got a couple of bath bombs. The one that I used already was a Yorkshire Violet, which is gorgeous. I've used it before. Uh, and this is a vanilla bean and this is a cafe au lait. So they do bath bombs and they do three for six pounds. And it's locally ish I think it's locally ish made made to you know vegetarian standards and uh, no nastiness no funk it's all, all the same sort of guarantees as Lush do and unfortunately we get to the point where one Lush bath bomb probably costs about six pounds now and if it doesn't yet then it won't be long uh, so getting three for six pounds there is pretty good they're not quite as good as the Lush ones in terms of uh, I don't know, maybe, you know, sometimes the colour is a little bit less in the bath, the scent is a little bit less, it's obviously not quite as up there as Lush who have the uh, the money and the gumph to basically make the best of the best, but given the price difference, there you go. And another thing that I picked up in the local holistic shop was some white sage, because they had some, so I was like, well, I fancy some, so I grabbed some, oh, and, a, and some frankincense essential oil which I'd run out of. I get through way too much frankincense essential oil. I suppose I should really grab the pad and read to you about essential oil for frankincense. Hang on. <laughs> Okie dokie. Right, so the metaphysical or spiritual uses of frankincense essential oil, enlightenment, inspiration, introspection, luck, protection and spirituality operates in the auric field and adapts to one's spiritual state of being. It serves as a protector and will not let one go where they are not ready to go. Frankincense essential oil holds some of the wisdom of the universe. It removes malevolent energies attached to a person, allowing one to open up to enlightenment and to inspire one to connect with an elevating spiritual self. Aligns with the spiritual it is sort of in terms of a calling. Perfume. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Helps with understanding. <sighs> right. So those are the non crystal bits. We're all on crystal bits now. So the next thing that, that I uh, grabbed a tumble stone off that I have not heard of before and I fancied having a go because I haven't tried it is. Eclogite, Eclo, Eclogo, Eclogite, Eclogite, Eclogite. <laughs> anyway, right, so I was kind of surprised at this because this is a red and green crystal. And I don't often get called by green crystals, so there you go. We shall read to you the meanings from the Crystal Bibble because it is not in the Book of Stones. Nurtures your inner energy, especially when you need courage or endurance. This piece of oceanic rust was pushed up from the depths of the earth under great pressure. It helps to maintain your chi, the life force that sustains body, mind and spirit, and reinforces healing by opening energy meridians in the body. Activates the higher energy centers in the body so your light body and your consciousness awaken further. Eclogite sustains body and the soul and encourages cell membranes to manifest the most beneficial genetic code possible. So there you go, that's what it says about Eclogite. I think we might have to have a further investigate. It's not a huge amount of information. So there's that. Okay. And then I've got some more amber. I've been a big fan of the amber lately, but I wanted some of the little pieces for the crystal gridding. So, let's get amber. So amber is technically 
crustal rather than a crystal. Let's see what the crystal bible says about its meanings. I just want to double check my meanings are right. I've got in my head what it's for, but it's a tree resin that has fossilized. So there you go. Powerful healer and cleanser that draws disease from the body. Cleaning the chakras, it absorbs negative energies and transmutes them into a positive force so it can be used to stimulate healing for the body. A powerful protector, it links the everyday self to the higher self, psychologically brings stability but also motivates by linking what is wished for by linking what is wished for into the drive to achieve it. Its warm, sunny energies translate into a spontaneous disposition that nevertheless respects tradition. Can help clear depression, stimulate the intellect, promoting a positive mental state and creative self-expression. So there is all of this, this lovely stuff. Oh, the, the bag's a bit shiny, isn't it? Mm. Sorry, while I was reading, I should, should have taken them out of the bag, really, but never mind. Um, it's quite a sensual stone as well, which is, a, for some reason, all the crystal books tend to sort of uh, shy away from saying it's a sensual crystal, it's a sexual crystal. You can use it in um, attraction and, and lust and love magic. So there you go. All right, I'm going to take the rest out of the bag, then. So. Come on, then. I'm talking to my crystals. Yes, you're quite right. I am talking to my crystals. So these are bloodstone. Uh, they've had some lovely bloodstone in there lately. Uh, these are quite raven head shaped when you when you actually see the, the physical shape of them. And bloodstone is a crystal which I associate with the Morrigan. It's a very strong protective crystal. Let's see what the Bible says. It's obviously used for blood work. Yeah, excellent blood cleanser, powerful healer, mystical and magical properties from controlling the weather and conferring the ability to banish evil and negativity to direct spiritual energies. In ancient times, bloodstone was said to have been an audible oracle, giving off sound as a means of guidance. It heightens the intuition, increases creativity. An excellent grounding and protecting stone. Uh, it gives courage, and so on and so forth. Helps in grounding heart energy, reducing irritability, aggressiveness, impatience. So the audible oracle thing is something that I always find really interesting every time I read it. And for me, that's probably part of why it's such a Morrigan-esque stone, because Morrigan delivers prophecy usually in the form of poetry so an audible oracle so it kind of aligns energy wise there okie dokie so then I picked up come on, four little rainbow moonstones and I don't think they have much of a shimmer I think one of them did no, I'm not going to behave right. Okay, whatever. Uh, Rainbow Moonstone is my preferred moonstone of choice for the full moon moonstones. I really do enjoy Midnight Moonstone. But I associate Midnight Moonstone as being more of a new moon, dark moon moonstone, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, but for me, the I really don't enjoy the sort of oranger moonstones as much as the rainbow ones. Now the rainbow ones obviously have the luminescence, they are obviously uh, closer to the labradorite which is my particular spirit stone and so it makes a lot more sense to me that uh, rainbow moonstone would speak to me a lot more. Um, is it going to be on the moonstone? It's either going to be under Moonstone or it's not going to be in this book. It's not in this book. Okay. <laughs> of course it isn't. Oh, in this book, I have all three crystal bibbles surrounding me, so you just have to bear with me one moment. Is 
than this one. Okay. Dum da dum dum da dum dum da da da. <laughs> right. Carries the vibration of cosmic light and offers spiritual healing for the whole of humanity, taking you on inter and multi dimensional journeys. It reminds you you are part of the ongoing, ever unfolding cycle, linking your soul into your current life plan. Helps you see the unseen, intuitively read symbols and synchronicities, and open you up to spiritual gifts. Powerfully attuned to the cycles of the moon, and so on. Yeah. So it's basically your sort of average, if you like, average, inverted commas, uh, <laughs> moonstone, but uh, it has a little bit more strength to it, a little bit more of a sort of awareness to it. It really sort of helps waken you up on a spiritual level. Yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say. So then I got a couple more of the <laughs> such suspense, honestly. New mites. Right. So I don't did these have flashes in I thought yeah. Okay, these have gold flecks in ah. You can just about see it on the edge there. So they ha do have gold flecks in. They're slightly larger than the the other one that I uh purchased. But I got two. Oh, you can't. Uh, there you go. You can sort of see the. There you go. On the edge there. So you can see the gold flecks of the. And they're. Oh gosh, they're giving me chills. Whoo, I've got energy all up my hand. Hello. I do love new might. Is the Sorcerer's Stone. Powerfully protective against ill wishing and psychic manipulation. One of the oldest minerals on Earth, it has an exceptional energy for those whose energies have evolved sufficiently to work with its intensity. It's particularly effective when shaped into a wand to pull out negative energy, imprints and implants, uh, which is what MAB is. Uh, MAB is my double terminated Numite wand. <laughs> Assists in seeing beyond the outer facade, creating an inner landscape to be traversed, a protective stone, strengthening the auric shield, and effective against negative energies as well as sorcery. Helps travelling with stealth and surety and is the perfect stone for lower world journeys to retrieve a lost soul or a child part. It shields from sight and safeguards your car. This intense stone has an element of magic that must be used respectfully with right intention or it rebounds. Uh, it goes on for quite a long time about it's, it's using it in terms of uh, past life regression and, and psychic behaviour problems with regards to that. But that's all quite in depth, so we'll just uh, leave it there. And you two beauties come over here to me. Oh, come over here. That's it. So last but not least, uh, I actually broke with tradition and uh, purchased a polished selenite. Uh, so it's, it's sort of semi-polished. It's not quite as ooh, as as heinous as some of the uh, polished bits, but I really enjoyed the shape, and I thought it would make a really lovely point for the centre of a crystal grid, and I just quite liked its, its its energy and its shape. I'm not the biggest fan of polished selenite. I prefer the raw. Uh, absolutely, 100% prefer the raw. But if if you look, it's not. I don't know if the camera's going to show. Uh, but this is. It's got. It's not too bad. It's it's not when, like when they buff it up to the crazy degrees, and it's kind of. It looks like glass, and it's just. It looks cheap and nasty. Um, I don't know what it is. I'm a bit weird about polished sunlight. But this particular piece was just lovely. I really enjoyed the shape of it. Uh, sort of obelisk style with the uh, slightly more rounded base. I really quite enjoyed it. So I thought, you know, we'll give that a go, we'll do some crystal gridding and yeah, so that's it. Uh, 
that's all the bits and pieces, that's the final nonsense for the birthday. <laughs> uh, yeah, many blessings.